<laughs> Hello everyone, how are you doing? How do you like that little sunburst coming in? Doesn't it look great? Um, today I am going to be making a video showing you how to make a Google Form that I learned about from Justin Slider. It's called the Never Ending Google Form. Let's get to the computer. Okay, here we are at the computer. I always go to Google Drive to make anything because it helps me keep organized. I have made a folder for Google Forms videos, and this is a Google Form video, so this is where I have kept this form. It is called the Never Ending Google Form P1, that means period one. So if you're a secondary teacher, you might have P1, P2, P3, whichever periods you have classes. If you're an elementary teacher, you might use the, the last name of the teacher of the class that's coming into the gym. Now, how do we make a Google Form? Well, you start out by going to New, go down to More, and then you go click on Google Forms. I've already done this, so to save a little time, so I'll just click over here to my Google Form. I've already filled out the questions in the title, but I'll show you exactly what they are. So when you go to make yours, you can make yours just like mine, and it will work perfectly. It is called the Never Ending Google Form P1, like I explained a few seconds ago. The first question you are going to ask is, what are we assessing today? This is going to be a short answer question. You can re make it required or not required because it's for your use only and uh, not the students. Then the second question is a check box grid question. In the rows, you will have students' names. The easiest way to get students' names into the, the Google Form is to copy and paste from your student information system. And then you would just uh, paste it right into this row one where it says Eric. And it, once you paste it in there, all the other names will just fill in automatically. In the comments or columns section, you're going to have medical slash absent and then four, three, two, one. And those numbers represent your rubric scores. And then your last question is just going to say comments. And you can put in here, in here, whatever you would like. It can be the ratings for the four, three, two, one, like what each one means, or any comments that you need to remember at the end of the period when you go back to analyze the data. So what does this look like once it's completed? from this your uh, perspective it will look like this on the working side this is, the first side was the back, the back end this is what you will work from in your classes you'll just type in the uh, answer to your question what are we assessing today then you'll go through and give students scores throughout the period and then if you have any comments you can write your comments in the comment area for that period now, I have already uh, done this, and I've created some data for you to look at because it's always good to look at the spreadsheet, too. And this is why this form is so awesome. Not only can it be used over and over and over again for any type of assessment, but it puts all of your data into one place. You can see there's a timestamp here. It tells you the date and the time that the assessment was done. This is our first question right here. What are we assessing today? And these are my little samples here. And you can see the students' names going across the top. And then finally, you can see all of their scores. And you can do uh, whatever you would like to do with all of their scores. And that, my friends, is the never-ending Google Form. So there you go. There is the never-ending Google Form. You can use it for many different um, assessments. And I hope you enjoyed this short little video, and I hope this Google Form is very helpful for you. See you in the next video.